This is a CBC Podcast. Get your daily dose of Canadian history from the CBC Digital Archives. Complete with clips from radio and television, find out what happened in the On This Day section at cbc.ca slash archives. It's Thursday, March 11th. The Quebec government says that the Nakab, a veil that covers a woman's entire face, is an impediment to learning French. Currently... On the flip side, being banned from French class for wearing a niqab is a great way to learn about Quebec. This is The Current Podcast. Hello, I'm Anna Maria Tremonti. You're listening to The Current. Et c'est le point euh, qu'on va continuer non seulement de réitérer, mais d'agir. La madame en question, la dame en question, ne pourra euh, à assister à nos cours de français avec le niqab. Point à la ligne. That's Quebec's Immigration Minister Yolande James speaking to Radio Canada earlier this week. And in case you missed the point, she's stating that Naima Atef Ahmed cannot have access to our French courses with a niqab, full stop. Naima Atef Ahmed is a 29-year-old Egyptian immigrant who has now been expelled from two separate government-funded French language classes. She was expelled for wearing a niqab, the veil that covers the entire face except for the eyes. She says she wears the niqab for religious reasons, and she's taking her case to Quebec's Human Rights Tribunal. But the provincial government is standing its ground, and the dispute has reignited the debate over the reasonable accommodation for religious and cultural minorities in Quebec. For his perspective on the debate, we're joined first by Samer Majzoub. He is the president of the Canadian Muslim Forum. He knows Naima Atef Ahmed, and he's in Montreal. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this case continues to create a stir in Quebec. You know Naima Ahmed. Who is she? By the way, uh, let's just clarify this point. Uh, I, I, I know Naima Atef Ahmed just out of this uh, issue that came up just recently last week. I know uh, I came across her husband before, not herself in particular, because our situation, our uh, our work so far is not to represent Naima as Naima. Our case is not the uh, is not the niqab by itself. It's the sentiment, it's the Islamo- Islamophobic sentiment against Muslims and Canadian Muslims, and at the same time against immigrants in general. So uh, it was just to clarify the point for the lady just quickly. Uh, she is a pharmacist. My understanding that she was striving to learn French to be to integrate within the Quebec society. She, my understanding also that she has been in the school for some time and things were going just very well until she was, I believe, expelled in November, last November. But suddenly it came up to the media just recently, last week or so. And so what uh, happened in November? Why was she expelled? I mean, to, the, to my understanding, she was uh, she has been there before, like for a semester and a half, and things were going very well until, uh, for a reason or another, something has came up with uh, maybe one of her instructors. Then suddenly she receives a paper of being expelled from the school, getting from the Minister of Immigration, getting involved in this directly. And my understanding also that she is the only student that being expelled from a French course school for this reason, and this drive us our drive our attention actually to 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 the whole sentiment of the against immigrants against other faiths. Okay, other let, let, before before I go there with you, let me just clarify: there were reports she demanded that men did not face her or look at her or sit near her. And is it your understanding that that is correct? Let me tell you, no, what what I do understand very well that. The, uh, she in the classroom. She used not to wear her niqab, and she had some uh, understanding with her instructor to sit on the first class. I mean, first uh, first chair or first, first on, row. On the, yeah. First row on the desk on the first row chairs, and th- things were going very well. My understanding is that there was certain oral presentation which she was supposed to give, and at that time the instructor asked her to turn around and speak to all students. Here, <laughs> where she said, as long as there are male students, I prefer not to. And uh, then the teacher or the instructor asked if she would like, oh no, if she wants her to ask the male students to turn their faces on the wall, she refused, completely refused. And she said, no, it is myself, I will be similar like to before, I will be standing up where I am and the first row and just, I will do my oral presentation. This is uh, the version of Mr. Mrs. Naima on this whole story. Okay, so she was expelled again from a classroom Tuesday morning. Why? 
honestly, this is another uh, frustration for her. After uh, she's a woman that is really looking sincerely for integration in this society, and after she was expelled in uh, from College Saint Laurent, she went and uh, enrolled in another school. This is my understanding. For 45 days, she was doing fine, and suddenly, I believe, a couple of days ago. Uh, two officials from uh, immigration, I mean, two officials from the Ministry of Immigration showed up with an expulsion letter again from the second school. So uh, let now, uh, so let's turn to your view of, of what the cover- Quebec government is doing in handling this case. Um, you have talked about um, Islamophobia. What are you saying? That's, that's it. Uh, the issue for us is not the issue of niqab, because it is so much focusing on the, the niqab. The whole matter of this niqab is a personal issue, personal conviction between a student and their instructors. But suddenly to see all politicians, I mean not all politicians, big names of politicians getting involved in this issue has created the sentiment of the Islamo- Islamophobic sentiment, and it is so much widespread. We see it in every talk show, in every media. It is as if it is an open highway to attack Muslim Canadians, their culture there and uh, and this is where the the alarming signs is coming in uh, it will not affect only muslim canadians it will affect all other canadians from different faiths and how so yes hello how so how will it affect other uh, let Canadians? Me tell you, let me tell you. The, the, it is you know, when, we, when a minister of immigration getting involved in the expulsion of a student. If it's the, the whole matter is it too, uh, purely pedagogical, because at the beginning they say it will be difficult for her to learn French. Now, if this is the case, so it is a pedagog- pedagogical issue where specialists are supposed to get involved, teachers, uh, the school. But to get politicians getting involved in such an issue, it, it, it is it's fuming the sentiment, number one. Number two, uh, in this kind of circumstances, politicians, before any decision, before they go public on this, they are at least supposed to know what could be the implications on that, especially in Quebec, okay. because of the reasonable accommodation debate and all this stuff. So they should be really more careful what to say, not what to say. And had it been there was a law that uh, prohibited... Well, okay, before you go any further, because I do want to ask about reasonable accommodation, but I'd like you to wait for a moment and listen to another voice of uh, someone who is waiting in the wings to also enter this discussion. Uh, I've been speaking with Samar Maj Zub. He is the executive dire- uh, president of the Canadian Muslim Forum. Um, and if you'll wait with us and keep listening in, uh, Marie McAndrew is waiting. She's the Canada Research Chair on Education and Ethnic Relations at the University of Montreal. She's in Montreal. Good morning to you. Good morning. Well, w- what do you make? Of, of the argument that Naima Ahmed, or any woman for that matter, should be uh, allowed to wear a niqab in, in her French class. Okay. Uh, I want to make two distinctions about the, the cause of the question and uh, <clears throat> the question itself, on the one hand, and the consequences. Uh, I'd say that this is a pretty clear case where you could say that uh, the reasonable accommodation limits have been reached. I think there's very compelling argument that it is unreasonable to be fully covered in any, not French class especially, it could be English class, class in Toronto, it could be learning math or whatever. I think the Supreme Court has stated often that uh, if there is uh, an impediment to benefiting fully from services and impediment also to basic values such as communication, relation. I mean, I think it could be a warranted decision. I also want, and I'm pretty sure it would stand through the Human Rights Commission and to uh, the, even the Supreme Court. That's a case where I have been training people on reasonable accommodation in school for over 15 years. I know all the details, the case will have been tra- all over the place, and I could say that it's one of the few cases that I think it will go to the court and people will recognize that this is a reasonable limit in a democratic society, just to use uh, the general framework of the Constitution. Okay, so so I'm, me- I'm confident about that. Number two, I would also say that unlike Mr. I forgot his name of the Canadian Muslim Mr. Forum, I know we're not going to be discussing about the man who saw the man who saw the man kill the 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 l'ours, l'homme qui a vu l'homme qui a vu l'ours, but because what we've heard uh, from the media is not at all the same story, including with people who were in her class. Especially, I don't want to go about who did what because it's better, I guess, to get it clearer from direct uh, people who were there. But 
at least it's not something who happened like this. For six months, the CEGEP uh, Saint Laurent has been negotiating with the woman. So it also falls under what the court asked us to do. They say reasonable accommodation is about a compromise on both sides, and you have to try in good faith.